The Enigmatic and Controversial Life of Frances Elena Farmer Frances Elena Farmer, born on September 19, 1913, in Seattle, Washington, was a promising American actress in the 1930s and 1940s. Her career was overshadowed by her tumultuous personal life, marked by mental health struggles, conflicts with the Hollywood studio system, and a series of scandals that have captivated public interest for decades. Here, we delve into 10 of the most scandalous and shocking facts about her life, each shedding light on the complex figure that Farmer was. Fact number 1. Turbulent Relationships and Heartbreak Frances Farmer's romantic life was marked by her intense and tumultuous affair with Clifford Odets, a renowned playwright already married at the time. This relationship began when Farmer moved to New York in the late 1930s to pursue her passion for theater, where she met Odets. He offered her a role in his play Golden Boy, a part that garnered her significant acclaim. However, despite their passionate connection, Odets ended the affair abruptly to return to his wife, leaving Farmer devastated. This emotional turmoil occurred during a critical juncture in Farmer's life and career, deeply affecting her. The end of their affair in the late 1930s was not just a personal blow to Farmer but also heralded a series of setbacks in her professional life, as her emotional state began to impact her work and public image. Number 2. A Meteoric Rise and Fall Frances Farmer's Hollywood career epitomized the classic narrative of rapid ascent to stardom followed by a precipitous decline. Having captured the public's attention with her debut in 1936, Farmer's natural talent and striking presence quickly made her a sought-after actress, starring in more than a dozen films over the next six years. Her standout roles during this period included performances in Come and Get It, 1936, where her portrayal received widespread acclaim. However, her nonconformist attitude and refusal to bow to studio pressures began to alienate key industry figures. By the early 1940s, notably around 1942, her career momentum had significantly waned, with fewer roles being offered to her. This decline was exacerbated by her personal struggles and contentious interactions with the media and studio executives, culminating in a diminished presence in Hollywood that starkly contrasted with her initial success. Number 3. The Alleged Lobotomy Controversy The most controversial and enduring myth surrounding Frances Farmer is the claim that she underwent a lobotomy while institutionalized. This narrative was largely popularized by the 1978 film Francis and the book Shadowland by William Arnold. However, subsequent investigations and research into Farmer's medical records and institutional history have found no evidence to substantiate this claim. Notably, in the decades following Farmer's death, several researchers and biographers have scrutinized the story, concluding that the lobotomy narrative was a sensationalized addition to her already tumultuous life story. Despite these clarifications, the myth persists, underscoring the sensationalism that has often overshadowed the reality of Farmer's struggles with mental health. Number 4. Arrest and Institutionalization Frances Farmer's public downfall began in earnest with her arrest in October 1942 for driving with her headlights on during a wartime blackout, under the influence of alcohol. This incident led to a $500 fine and the suspension of her driver's license but also marked the beginning of a more troubling period in her life. Unable to adhere to the conditions set by the court, Farmer was arrested again in January 1943, leading to her being physically restrained and forcibly removed from a hotel room. The images and reports of this incident shocked the public and catalyzed her involuntary commitment to various psychiatric institutions over the next several years. During these institutional stays, Farmer was subjected to numerous treatments that were considered standard at the time, including electroconvulsive therapy. Number 5. The Explosive Custody Battle The legal battle for Frances Farmer's guardianship emerged as a highly scandalous affair, notably intensifying between her mother, Lillian Van Ornum Farmer, and her then-husband, Leif Erikson, around the time of her institutionalization. This contentious fight, which unfolded in the public eye, was rife with allegations of exploitation and the mishandling of Farmer's affairs. Such legal disputes vividly illustrated the stark manipulation of Farmer's life and career, often casting a shadow over her personal agency and painting a grim narrative around the exploitation of mental health issues for financial gain. 
The custody battle effectively stripped Farmer of her independence during a time when she was most vulnerable, contributing to the public's enduring fascination with her life's more tragic aspects. Number 6. A Pioneer in Television Frances Farmer's transition to television in the 1950s marked a significant turnaround in her career, showcasing her adaptability and resilience. Hosting Frances Farmer Presents, a local Indianapolis TV show from 1958 to 1964, she became a pioneering figure in the transition of film stars to television. The show, where Farmer introduced movies and conducted interviews, allowed her to rebuild her public image and establish a successful career outside of Hollywood's film industry. This period in her life highlighted her abilities as a presenter and interviewer, offering a platform for her to engage with a different aspect of the entertainment world and defy those who had prematurely marked the end of her career. Number 7. The Hollywood Blacklist. During the McCarthy era, the fear of communism infiltrated Hollywood, leading to the blacklisting of many industry professionals suspected of communist sympathies. Frances Farmer, known for her intellectual pursuits and visit to the Soviet Union during her college years, became a target of this blacklist. Her association with communist sympathies, whether substantiated or not, significantly hindered her ability to find work in the entertainment industry. This period exacerbated the challenges Farmer faced, further alienating her from Hollywood and cementing her reputation as a controversial figure. The blacklist not only impacted her career prospects but also reflected the broader societal anxieties and political paranoia of the time, highlighting how quickly one's fortunes could change amid the era's ideological battles. Number 8. An Intellectual and Rebel Frances Farmer's intellectualism and nonconformity set her apart in an industry and era that often favored compliance and glamour over depth and dissent. Her educational background at the University of Washington, where she majored in journalism and drama, coupled with her controversial trip to the Soviet Union, underscored her keen interest in politics and social issues. Farmer's outspoken nature and refusal to adhere to the conservative expectations of Hollywood established her as both a figure of admiration and controversy. Her life and career reflect the struggles of an individual battling against the constraints of an industry and society unwilling to embrace her complex identity as both an actress and an intellectual rebel. This aspect of her persona has contributed to the enduring fascination with her life, offering a glimpse into the challenges faced by those in the public eye who dare to defy conventional norms. Number 9. A Tortured Soul Frances Farmer's mental health struggles are among the most poignant aspects of her life story. Diagnosed with conditions ranging from schizophrenia to bipolar disorder, Farmer underwent a range of treatments typical of the era, including electroshock and insulin shock therapies. These treatments, now considered inhumane by modern standards, reflect the limited understanding and compassion for mental health issues at the time. Farmer's experiences with mental health care underscore the broader historical context of how mental illness was treated and perceived in the mid-20th century. Her struggles highlight the need for empathy, understanding, and humane treatment for those suffering from mental health issues, serving as a stark reminder of the importance of progress in mental health care and advocacy. Number 10. The Unfinished Memoir. Will There Really Be a Morning? is a hauntingly titled autobiography that offers insight into Frances Farmer's tumultuous life and mind. However, its authenticity has been questioned due to its completion and publication posthumously in 1972 by Jean Ratcliffe, a friend of Farmer's, ostensibly to settle debts. The book's disputed authenticity adds a layer of mystery to Farmer's already complex legacy, complicating efforts to separate the facts of her life from fiction. The memoir, controversial and unfinished, serves as a focal point for debates about Farmer's life, her struggles, and how they were perceived and represented posthumously. It embodies the challenges of understanding and interpreting the life of a public figure whose personal and professional experiences were subject to sensationalism, speculation, and reinterpretation. Farmer's autobiography, with all its complexities and controversies, invites readers to reflect on the nature of fame, identity, and the struggle to find peace and authenticity in a tumultuous world. <laughs>